hello and uh, welcome back uh, today we have another frequency counter it's from Philips and it is around about the time that they started to uh, have a, a join with the Fluke so you can see that the design well at least the color is uh, improving um, I bought this one in eBay also uh, I expected uh, it to look a little bit uh, more impressive and also a lot better because as you can see it is uh, well just a very old meter uh, but you can see still it's a, it's a professional one because like with the other cheaper models don't have and it has a external reference input for a 10 megahertz and you can just put in uh, from a half to 15 volts RMS so that uh, is a lot and of course that increases the accuracy so the internal time base doesn't have to be that precise because we just gonna connect it to our uh, lab reference and that makes it very nice um, I'd like to show you a bit about uh, the Evolve of uh, Philips uh, through the years so I can show you the older models way up to uh, this one so uh, here we have the early uh, Philips with uh, with the blue line in the top I'm not sure it's visible and later they came with a little bit more professional line which one was uh, brown that was this one with the red line and actually this one I will show you in, uh, in a picture later on my screen uh, this one also came in, in in this color and it's exactly the same type number so this is really the first meter when they started to here you can see they started to join with fluke so they made their own model and they made the model together so well here we have our uh, current the one with uh, the fluke name also on it and you can see well th this is actually the full fluke because this one doesn't even say Philips so we have three models we have the one I just received here that says Philips PM662 we have this one in the back that says fluke PM6662 and here we have the model just before that with the brown color and it also says PM6662 okay back on the table um, I will now just start cleaning as I always uh, do and uh, then I come back to you okay we uh, done the cleaning now look at this now we can test it let's try to uh, fire it on let's see we have the power okay power button doesn't uh, stick it uh, does have a lot of digits so maybe well I was a, dis a bit disappointed when I, I received it because uh, I, I, I pay a fair amount uh, for this meter but uh, yeah and it looked all dirty and somehow it didn't look that that special but if I if I look at it uh, now better because of the external input for the reference and I see here a lot of digits it might even be a, a, a proper one first see if we can solve the issue with the button okay so the spring is uh, is a bit loose we will uh, open that um, well it needs to heat so um, meanwhile I can just open it just uh, let it stabilize there are two screws in the back it's a torque so we're just gonna try that opens like that 
and uh, it doesn't have too much uh, inside. I, I, I will zoom in. Wait. While zooming in into the device, we don't see too many components. Uh, apparently, it's not needed. It's just counting some pulses. <laughs> so uh, and. Uh, a lot can be dealt with in integrated circuits. Um, what I do see is that I just using here a standard crystal, and I see here the standard capacitor trimmer. Uh, but that also confuses me because I see here a button, and it says Calib. So there is a button to calibrate, and there is there a trimmer. So all this calibration is for the extra module on top. Or, yeah, I, I, I wonder. I, I will need to look in the service manual, but that's the first thing I see. This uh, switch for the sensitivity is, uh, ooh, there's a lot of digits. It's uh, not, a, not a normal turning switch. If you can see here, it's just a long strip, and there is a little wheel, and you just and that okay well that's a solution uh, okay let's see if it's uh, accurate or not oh, and I just found uh, something out that uh, you have all these options and modules that you could, could put into it look at this they have here well it's powered on so we need to be careful a bit but if I carefully take it out <laughs> it's from factory you have here all the modules so they can probably uh, ah yeah they, st they stick that here there is here uh, a space and then you can just put the sticker there so I'm just going to keep the stickers there I will not buy the options but it is still huh? well it has been uh, on for a while so it should be uh, warm enough or stabilized uh, this is on the 0.2 seconds and it actually says 10.0000 <laughs> and this is on the lab reference so a 10 is a 10 here uh, but we can put it on one second and uh, see what that, uh, what that does and then we start to see it is a little bit off uh, that's 10 hertz if I'm correct yes so uh, but I need to read if I need to adjust it with the trimmer or I need to do something with this calibration button so uh, I'm not sure about that and you can see uh, it, we have also some uh, extra digits so let's see if we can get uh, any further okay um, I just let it run for a few cycles on the 10 seconds and we still have here the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 10, 11 hertz of, uh, of a difference and you can see this meter is actually quite uh, <laughs> quite accurate uh, I mean uh, digit wise then and uh, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 digits so uh, it is impressive and it didn't look that impressive at first no because it just is, uh, has uh, one knob and two buttons and, and that's about it um, so uh, I'm, 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 I'm surprised uh, what I do want to do is also put uh, an external signal just to see if that works and then it should be uh, spot on so. okay I uh, did that I put the uh, lab reference in the back and I'm feeding the 10 megahertz from the from the Maconi and the Maconi is also again linked to the same uh, lab reference uh, and now we see the 10 there is no indication that that is running on external reference so I uh, I would have preferred if there was somewhere in the display uh, let's go to the 10 seconds okay look at that that is what we like to see so that looks very nice it's 10.1234567 seven zeros so we are below the hertzes and that looks very nice so it says uh, it should uh, be able to uh, go to 120 megahertz so let's see if it still uh, does that uh, we'll put a shorter uh, time and let's put first uh, 100 
Yes, we have 100. And we can still have the Ezra digit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, 100 still works fine. Let's go to 120. And I said that there was no indication of the external reference. I was wrong because actually it says here. External ref and it has a huge triangle pointing down, so uh, I uh, missed it. <laughs> Look at that, it's supposed to work uh, from uh, over, uh, until 120 megahertz, and it is, st it is still working. And I'm on 180, so uh, this fre frequency counter is uh, a lot better than I uh, thought it uh, would be. Above 180, you can really see the sens sensitivity go down, so. Uh, I would say up to 180, no problem, <laughs> it's actually very nice. So now I uh, like to find out about the calibration, what the button does, or we need to use the trimmer. So uh, I will dive into the documentation. Okay, uh, well the adjusting was uh, nothing to do with the calibration button, it was just on the crystal with the trimmer. Uh, just wanted to show you again that it works well above the 120 megahertz. As you can see now, I have 145, 625, so it's perfect for uh, for the two meters. So uh, I will put it back together and come back. So there we have it, a nice looking frequency counter. I'm a lot more positive than I was uh, at first. Um, it's supposed to go to 120, it goes all the way up to 185 and uh, yeah and, 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 and I like the external input of course because I can connect it to the to the lab. So I think it was a positive day. <laughs> Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.